um, thank you again all for being here. We're going to go ahead and jump into our presentation. Um, I wanted to also share before I start, there every uh, day throughout the, the year, every day of the year, there is an administrator or one of us that is on call for the campus. And so if my phone rings, I'm the one that's on call this weekend. So if my phone rings, I will have to step out, but hopefully it doesn't, <laughs> knock on wood. All right. So this is just an overview of what we're gonna be going over today. Um, our Vice President of Student Affairs, uh, Dr. Sandra Vasquez is not um, able to be here in the room right now because she's taking care of a couple other incidents, but I know that she would be welcoming you all with a big smile, a very wonderful laugh, and a joy, um, and joy to have you all here with us. Uh, we'll go over what the Dean of Stu uh, Students has support-wise. We'll go over academic support, residence life and housing, campus life and orientation, career services, and then athletics, followed by some Q&A. We'll be around after this too, so if you wanted to ask more specific questions to one of us, you're more than welcome um, to find us after the session too. All right, so our mission statement is that we, um, Student Affairs advances Pitzer's mission and core values by providing student-centered support services and an engaging co-curricular program. We are committed to the holistic development of students, challenging students to live with integrity and empowering students to be active participants in their own experience. I have to tell you that um, I just recently joined the Pitzer family and I have to share that one of the things that really drew me to Pitzer and why I really enjoy coming to work every day is our true commitment to our students, that we recognize that you know, the way that we value our, our core values and the way that we actually live those through has been really um, impactful in a very good way for my career and in, in feeling like I, I am making a difference in every student's life and that is a wonderful feeling. So just to kind of show you all an overview of what we'll be seeing, there's a lot of resources that we provide, a lot of support that we give, and a lot of care, I would say, is one of the things that's probably not on here, but I think there's a lot of heart um, for our students and a lot of support. All right, so we'll jump into it. The Dean of Students office, um, this is the Dean of Students staff. I wanted to share, we have staff who, Julia, for example, oversees all of our COVID-19 responses and how we're handling those if our students need uh, support if and when they get COVID. Um, she's also the first point of contact for our Dean of Students office, so you'll probably interact with her if you're reaching out to our office. Uh, Bryce Sternquist, who's in the back right now, he uh, does so much for our transportation and, um, and operations, so everything from our green bike program to our shuttles that take, us, uh, that take our students from CCA to campus to the library in, in a loop. And then also for any type of students who um, maybe have a temporary disability or some type of accommodation that, you know, he's also the one that drives the carts to take our students to their classes. And so he's very busy, um, but also very committed and great at what he does. We have Linda Lamb, who um, serves also for our APITA students, which are Asia Pacific Islander, Desi American students. She provides a lot of um, academic, personal, and uh, culturally relevant support for those populations. And, and other students uh, who, who go to the campus. Tasnia is amazing. Uh, she is the assistant dean of students and she is the primary resource for our advocates and advocates for affinity groups, um, our ID board and our BIPOC students. Um, she really focuses on retention and belonging on our campus. And then rounding out her team is Melissa who um, does a lot of our um, tracking of our compliance and then also provides resources for our students. So I'm gonna go through these really quickly. Again, we're gonna have a Q&A opportunity and then you can always find us afterwards. But I'm gonna go ahead and welcome our academic support. All right, hi again. Um, so my name is Gabriela Tempestoso. I am the Senior Associate Dean of Students and Director of Academic Support for those of you who did not catch that earlier um, as folks were still filtering in, but I oversee academic support services, which includes, as you can hopefully see on the slide, access, disability support, um, that includes accommodations. If you had an academic um, or other accommodations before you arrived at Pitzer, I am the um, person who you'd like to, you'd like to speak to and also um, my staff. Um, academic coaching, health and wellness, and also additional support. So I will also be going through that quickly, understanding that this is just a snapshot of what we offer, um, but will be available for questions after. 
So this is our team. Um, we have a fabulous team that is here to support your students. Um, several of these folks will be at the resource fair, so I'm gonna kind of breeze through this um, slide because you will have an opportunity to speak with them in person at the resource fair. So I really encourage you all to attend that as well. Um, so really um, what our office does is again, just focus on working with students who have any kind of accommodation need, whether it's for a learning difference or medical, um, chronic illness, anything of that nature. Um, our office works to support students on that level, both on the academic front, um, as well as if they need housing accommodations or things of that nature. Um, we also work with students and interacting with faculty if there's ever um, a concern around a, a faculty challenge where students aren't able to advocate for themselves for whatever reason our office will also be there to support. But we also teach students to advocate for themselves. That is also a very big piece of what we do where students um, learn how to very, of course, in an appropriate way um, work with faculty and the faculty also um, at Pitzer are very aware of um, accommodation needs and really work with our students in a, in a very holistic and um, in, a, in a partnership. We also have academic coaching. Um, how many folks, show of hands, know what academic coaching is? All right, just a few of you, great. So academic coaching is different than tutoring. You might have perhaps had tutoring or know of what tutoring is. Academic coaching is really working with students so that you are more effective as a student. It includes time management, it includes study skills, it includes um, how to tackle a particular assignment or even how to tackle a particular semester. So our academic coach, Connie Helen, will be at the resource fair. I highly encourage you to speak with her. Um, she works with all students, not just students with accommodations. Um, she's a fabulous resource that we are so happy to have. And, and students, once they engage with academic coaching, really um, often benefit a great deal from it, recognizing um, that, that journey on how to become an effective college student, and then later on, how to be, become an effective uh, person out in the world. So that's definitely um, a lot of what we do. Again, you can see the accommodations there. I won't, I won't go into those. Um, a couple of workshops, just an examples of also what our office does. We did start an ADHD organizing, scheduling, and support group this semester. We are so excited. Sorry, this academic year. Um, we are very excited about it. We do have um, quite a lot of students who do identify as someone with um, ADHD, and so we really work with students to um, support them so that they will thrive in their academics. <laughs> Study skills, workshops, things of that nature. Again, things, just examples of what our office um, puts on for students to engage in throughout the year. Then our health and wellness side um, of our office, we really focus on, again, you'll hear this theme of a holistic perspective of student learning, student development. When students come to college, we firmly believe that they are learning to become thriving human beings, and that is also what we um, work with students on. Anything from sleep hygiene, learning how sleep affects your focus, how it affects your academics, um, eating nourishing meals, managing stress, managing anxiety. These are all the kinds of things that we, um, we work with students on and put on workshops. Um, our eight dimensions of wellness is also a framing that we use for health and wellness, so that's something that um, if your student is interested in, we do have um, health and wellness ambassadors, so students can get involved in that way if that's something um, students are passionate about, to work with other students um, on a peer level to um, enhance wellness. Again, more samples of what our office has done just this past year. Um, we do have mental health um, ambassadors as well that focus on destigmatizing mental illness. We do have students that come to Pitzer who um, have already had a diagnosis perhaps of um, depression, anxiety, bipolar. Um, these are things that we also work very hard to work with students to not only destigmatize, but the, again, focus on students thriving um, along with um, a diagnosis perhaps. So that's what our um, Mental Illness Week was about. And we launched a group, um, a student group, perhaps you've heard of Active Minds, which is a national advocacy organization that is on college campuses and high school campuses across the country. We were so proud that we launched that this year and students were extremely receptive. We had uh, many students get involved and are continuing to work with um, our uh, assistant dean, Stephanie Hannett, who leads that up. And Strive to Thrive, you'll hear that term a lot, um, is really the campaign for this wellness um, initiative. So it's kind of under the umbrella of Strive to Thrive, but you can see again, uh, samples of our workshops and just how we um, engage students and then also have students uh, lead, um, for example, our Wellness Wednesday events. Montour Counseling, and this is a very uh, small slide, so I don't know if you wanna go ahead and take a picture for a very big topic. 
So I'm happy to answer questions later on about that, but we do have several um, opportunities for students if you are, your student needs counseling supports, whether it's short-term crisis counseling or longer-term therapy. If a student already has a therapist at home and then comes to college, there's definitely a lot of um, conversation that needs to happen around how that's going to work, so I'm available for that later on. But also our Montessori Counseling and Psychological Services um, is the counseling center for the Claremont Colleges, so they assist all of us. Um, so again, if you have any questions about that or any more in depth that you need to um, go into on that, I encourage you to take a picture of the slide and then contact uh, Mansoor, but then also I'm available for questions later. All right, thank you so much. All right, I'm back. Um, this time is my residence life hat. All right, so uh, we have, I, I think at 12.30 or 1.30, you all will get a chance to tour our residence halls. So if you haven't had a chance um, to do that prior to today, today is your opportunity to do that. Um, this are all of our residence hall areas. Um, there's West, Pass, Mead, and Claremont Collegiate Apartments. But where our first years um, will be staying is gonna be in POS. So it's actually the ones that are around the pool area. So it's, it's our first years really love that space. Um, Atherton, Pitzer, and Sanborn Halls. In uh, Sanborn Halls, our, um, as I mentioned, in Sanborn Hall is where our residence life office is. And so um, we work closely. There's a resident director that is in each of our areas and, um, and their office, and they reside in that area. So there are three um, resident directors who live on. We have a resident assistants who are our students who are selected to create community, to do programming, to do some checking in, et cetera, and then also to make sure that everyone's safe and following our policies. And then the other um, component to that is we also have faculty and residents who live in our halls as well. So um, it's a really unique community. Most of our students do live on all four years. Um, we do have about, I would say, about 150 who are approved to live off campus out of all of our students. So I think that says a lot about how much they've really enjoyed living in our halls. Each hall has some study rooms, a lounge area, laundry facilities, and then we do have a community kitchen. And then probably the other thing that you all are wondering is about meal plans. And we do offer 19, 16, 14, and 12. And I know that um, a lot of times our students think they're gonna go for 19 because they're hungry all the time, but they don't remember that they probably aren't gonna get up for breakfast every day. So uh, it's really thinking about what that looks like for you and what fits best for you and, and your schedule. Um, our zero are for any medical accommodation, accommodations or for our off-campus students. Um, actually, a lot of our off-campus students also get a meal plan so that during the day they're able to stop by and get um, some food. So um, for our first year options of housing, it is a double in Pitzer, Atherton, or Sanborn, as we mentioned. Um, and we do provide housing accommodations. Um, there is a separate form that you'll need to fill out and we work closely with Gabriella's area to make sure that we're placing our students who need, who need accommodations in housing and placing them where the best location is for them um, to be. And then of course, if, if you have a, a, a situation that requires or would, would really benefit from an off-campus housing, if you live nearby, et cetera, um, you can also apply to live off-campus. Um, I highly recommend that you visit our website um, to learn more about our first year student housing. Um, but we'll send all this information. We're very communicative in, in when you need to do things and then you can also email housing at pitzer.edu and one of my staff members is really, really great at uh, responding quickly to, to those needs. All right, so the timeline. On June 1st is when our application for housing opens. And so there will be a general housing application and then there'll be an accommodation application that'll open. So if you have an accommodation or if you're requesting an accommodation, you do need to submit supporting de uh, documents so just keep that in mind for when you apply to housing. The, uh, the application closes on July 1st. And then what we'll do in July is we'll provide about two weeks or so um, for our students to either let us know who they want to be paired with or to, um, or to say that they want to do random. What we're also trying to create, and we're still working out some of the details, is for those of us who are 
not us because I don't, I'm not a first year, but for our first year who um, don't quite know who their roommate is and maybe want to see like who else is looking for a roommate, we're trying to create some type of like on, um, online way to meet each other. So maybe a Zoom event, um, some type of roommate mixer type of thing to help our students kind of start connecting. Um, and then once you submit that in July, we'll notify you um, by July 21st who you're uh, assigned with, where you're going to be assigned with Tall, and who your roommates and suite mates are. So I'm sure that this is probably for some of y'all in the audience, like something to be really nervous about is like, who am I gonna be roomed with? Um, I have to tell you though, it's really, really important that on your application, you be as specific and honest as possible. I promise you that if your parent or your guardian or your friend fills out your application for you, you're probably not going to have as great of a match as you think that you deserve, right? So you might be like, I am a late night person, but your parent might be like, oh no, they go to sleep at 10, when we know that might not be the truth. So really think about this um, very intentionally, thinking about like, this is what you're going to be displaying. So everything that you put on your profile is what the other students will be seeing. So remember that. So if you want someone who is clean because you like to be clean, you need to make sure you include that and be as specific as possible of what that means because we all have different uh, ideas of what clean means. Um, just look at my son's room and my daughter's room and they're both clean and I'm like, oh gosh, very different. Uh, so just keep in mind what that looks like or whatnot. Um, your roommate does not have to be your best friend. Okay, so it's really important that you keep in mind that you're not looking for like your best friend forever. They might become that. I know some of my friends who are still really close with their roommates. I am not, so that's okay. But what happened was that I was able to find um, areas that were really important to me that I needed in a roommate, right? So I needed someone that I could connect with, that I could trust, that I could just build some type of um, mutual respect for and also like an understanding of what we wanted, right? Our communications were very similar. So think about some of these things. Um, like I mentioned, ways to find your roommate. Maybe today you might find someone that you really vibe with and you're like, oh, are you looking for a roommate? You know, start doing that um, social engagement with each other. Um, and then you can be randomly assigned. And as I mentioned, I put random in quotations because it's not randomly. We go through the uh, preferences that you indicate to match students up. So please, 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 once again, be specific and honest about your application. Um, and then, like I mentioned, we'll have some mixer opportunities. And then, um, obviously, if you have other pits or events, that's a great way of meeting other students and seeing if they can be your potential roommates. All right, um, we'll be providing more tips on our uh, Instagram page, so you're more than welcome to follow us. And then um, last, I think there's two more slides, sorry, y'all. Move-in day is Saturday, August 19th. You'll get all that information once um, orientation information starts going out. And then um, first day of classes is Monday, August 28th. And so you don't get to like chill from the 19th to the 28th. We will have a, a fun orientation event scheduled for y'all throughout those days, but just be prepared of what that'll look like. And then lastly, um, these are, I, I have a, a staff of about six, but um, these are the two that you'll probably work with the most over the summer. Natalie Murillo is our assistant director for residential operations. And so she's the one that uh, manages our housing at pitzer.edu email. She's the one that does the assignments. She's the one that works closely with our accommodations to make sure that they're placed in the space that best fits their needs. And then Johnny Moreno is our first year residence director. And um, as I mentioned, he has hired an outstanding first year RA uh, group. So I'm looking forward to the fun that you all are gonna have next year. Um, hello again. As I um, earlier said, I'm Elena. Um, I'm, I've actually been working at Pitzer in the campus life department for 12 years and I'm a big Pitzer fan. So um, the areas that I get to oversee and, the, um, and work with is our new student orientation program, which all of you will go through if you choose to commit to Pitzer. Um, I also work with our staff that puts on campus life events as well as works with students in student organizations. Um, I also oversee the staff that um, oversees our Gold Student Center. You all had sessions in there this morning. Um, there's a gym, and then um, we have some, you know, student campus life space, student senate space, as well as some meeting space. Um, and I also oversee the staff that oversees our Grove House, which is our old historic home. 
um, which has a kitchen and a lot of student meeting space. Um, and I, um, and yeah, so that's, that's what I will see. So I think the most exciting thing um, that I have been a part of at Pitzer is being a part of the orientation adventure program. I was the director of the orientation program for eight years, and now I get to support my team um, who does that. So our new student orientation, um, those nine days, eight days that Letty was speaking about, um, I would say from a student perspective, and you can ask the students that you meet this weekend, um, that the orientation program is really transformative in getting you adapted to the community and to like who the students are, what students get involved with, um, how they navigate all the resources that folks have talked about, how they made friends. Um, and more than anything, it's fun to get to explore Southern California, especially if you're not from here. Um, so we have two and a half day trips this year, um, and it will include two or three orientation leaders, as well as anywhere between 10 and 15 of your new student peers. We also have a trip that, um, one or two trips a year that is specifically for transfer students, so they also can kind of begin to build um, a wonderful community. We also have academic preparation. One of the unique things about the Claremont Colleges is you don't select your classes until you meet with your first year seminar professor who serves as your academic advisor. And so during the orientation program, we have sessions on you know, how to navigate our online systems, how to navigate you know, course registration um, and whatnot. We have resource sessions. Obviously, this is just kind of an introduction, but we want you to understand how you are gonna be successful here at Pitzer all the resources that you might want to check out um, and the resources um, that you might you know, want to get to know, I guess. We do 5C tours and then obviously there's social events. Um, the best way to get to know people is eating with each other in the dining hall. And so um, you get to enjoy our wonderful Pizza food. Um, so back to the orientation adventure trips. This year we have a variety of types of trips based on people's interests and people's comfortability. Um, we're going to be running two backpacking trips up in the San Jacinto um, Mountains. We're going to do a bunch of beach camping trips because it's kind of neutral. Um, we'll have trips that um, do kayaking, that do surfing, that do more of the casual like games and arts and crafts and sunbathing and hiking. Um, we're doing some stuff up in the mountains. Um, and then we have a number that stay on campus, sleep on campus, but go out on adventures, either in the city or in the local outdoors. Um, we kind of have trips for everyone. So um, that will be a part of your summer process is kind of determining what are you comfortable with. Um, the team that is gonna support you in your transition, in, in addition to all the student leaders we talked about here, all the professional staff, you're gonna have orientation leaders who will work with you for that entire week. Um, and they will be your OA leaders. They will um, you know, do social things with you. They'll be eating in the dining halls with you. And then we also have a group of student leaders called academic guides. They're all paired up with one of your first year seminars and they're here to help you with registration, to understand the academic expectations, to, under, to remind you of all the deadlines throughout your first term, to remind you of all the academic support resources um, that Connie, um, the writing center, the library offer you. And so we really think the peer to peer is the most effective and we want you to know that you are gonna be supported by a bunch of upper class the schedule kind of for the summer, as Letty spoke about, is June is kind of where you're going to be filling out your applications, you're going to be registering for things, you're going to be kind of getting access to your email, um, talking about your trip preferences and housing applications, first year seminar preferences, and getting all those health forms done that Julia collects for us. In July, there's going to be some online components to, um, you know, just coming to Pitzer, making sure that you understand all your deadlines. You'll get all of your placements at the end of July, so you'll know who you're living with, you'll know who you're going through orientation with, and you'll know who you're taking your first year seminar course with. And then August is when the fun begins. Um, so if you want to take a screenshot of this, uh, Lexi Lai, who I will introduce on the screen in the next one, um, she runs our orientation program. She has students working with her on creating the orientation program. They will share details via Instagram. You can also email them at, at any point with any questions, even if you're still deciding if you're gonna commit at orientation at Pitzer. Um, and obviously the website is always a resource as well. 
So I, I, we also want students to have fun when they're at Pitzer. Obviously, like you're going to be in the residence halls, you're going to be living with someone that respects you mutually, but you might find your best friends in clubs and orgs. You might find your best friends at going to programs and on different types of trips. And so we really encourage all of our new students to kind of explore when they get to Pitzer. The cool thing about being a part of the Claremont Consortium is Pitzer has about 50-ish clubs. The Claremont Colleges, in addition to that, has about 150 more that all Claremont students can be involved in. So there's literally a type of student organization for every kind of identity, every kind of interest, um, club sports, all of that kind of stuff. And then you also, if you're like, I have a brilliant idea, I want to start a new club, you just need to find eight friends and you can start a club and, and our staff will support you in that. And then we have tons of events that happen on an ongoing basis. Um, other things, as I previously mentioned, the Gold Student Health and Wellness Center, we, um, in addition to sharing um, the, the, the options that Pomona has, which are beautiful and Miriam will talk about, we actually have our own um, gym, we have our own Pilates studio and we have our own yoga studio. So you can take classes in yoga, Pilates. If you're just like a kickboxer, we have a kickboxing area. Um, we really want to make sure that it's accessible for you to be able to take care of yourself physically. They do tons of programs. They, you know, collaborate with Strive to Thrive. They encourage students to come together around, you know, pick up basketball. There's a pick up volleyball tournament. Um, all kinds of things. Spike ball. We use our pool for fitness. Um, so that's a really awesome opportunity. We also have a gear closet. Our Pitzer Outdoor Adventure um, Club on campus does, does tons of outdoor stuff. The orientation program does a ton of outdoor stuff. So we have all of that gear that students can check out for free. Um, so it, we don't want the outdoors to be inaccessible just because you don't have the gear. And then the last thing is our Grove House. The Grove House is kind of like one of the heart and souls of Pitzer in that it's a place that any group can kind of reserve to come together. Um, we do tons of events in there. You can you know, kind of get a break from the dining hall, although the dining hall is delicious. We have a student-run kitchen, and so you can, you know, grab some coffee or some tea. They have world-renowned, you know, uh, cookies that you can grab, and then they just have a ton of other fresh food. Um, and you can get a job there, quite frankly. A lot of students <laughs> work in the Grove House. So um, I, love, I love this part of the Pitzer experience, that you get to go to classes, you get to live in the res halls, you get to get involved in... Um, civic engagement, but you're also just going to have fun. You, what's, what's the point of college if you're not having fun? This is my team. They're a wonderful team. Um, I'm going to be actually at the um, fair at lunchtime, but because the rest of them have long weekends in April, because everyone wants to put on programs in April. So I'm giving them a break. But I have been at Pitzer, as I said, for 12 years, and I can answer any questions you have about getting involved. <laughs> Hey folks, hey, can, you can hear me okay? Good, I can't stand behind a podium, it just doesn't work, sorry. Uh, I'm Brad, I'm the director of the Career Center. I need to give you a couple of uh, caveats before I jump in. The first is, Elena just talked to you about things like beach camping and hanging out at the Grove House and that kind of stuff. I'm gonna show you bar graphs. Are we excited, <laughs> right? Thank you, I love, love the enthusiasm around bar graphs. The second thing I want to say to the parents and family members in the room, my oldest child is a senior in high school. A week from now, I will be sitting where you're sitting. <laughs> I'll be at the resource fair also. If you want to commiserate, <laughs> celebrate about this emotional, exciting, expensive process, just let me know, okay? And the third thing is, you can probably already tell I'm not from Southern California. <laughs> Right? Anybody here from the Southeast? All right, got a couple folks, excellent. With basically no mosquitoes here. It's amazing. Um, I have about 10 minutes and it takes me 10 minutes to say hello, okay? So we're gonna go through this really, really fast. So first, I'm gonna show you some of those bar graphs. Data is really, really important. I hope, if, particularly if you're looking at other schools as well, that you're comparing career outcome information. So let me tell you how we gather that. First, let me say this before I forget. I'm gonna show you career outcome information post-graduation. I would guess about 70% of our interactions with students are what they're, is about what they're gonna do while they're a student. 
internships, research opportunities, career implications of majors, those kinds of conversations. But we'll focus here on career outcomes, okay? It's important to me that you know the data that you're looking at. We follow national standards where we will determine what our Pitzer graduates doing approximately six months after graduation, okay? Different schools will report different things. Some schools will report what graduates are planning to do, which is fine. You just need to know what you're looking at in that, right? So here, we were able to find for the class of 2022, this is kind of fresh off the presses. We just put this together finally about a week and a half ago. We're going to show you what about 75% of them were doing six months out. So no, I can explain later if you're a data geek like me about what a knowledge rate is, but we knew with confidence about what 75% of our graduates are doing. That's what this data shows. Everybody with me? We good? Okay, great, super exciting. Here's your first bar graph, okay? You all can read that, I hope. I won't go through it except to explain what a couple of things are. Um, ant, grad school, just means they were anticipating graduate school. That means the graduate said the primary thing they were doing might be, for instance, studying for the MCAT or for the LSAT. Kind of preparation for graduate school, that's what they said was the primary thing they were doing. Uh, service volunteer programs, those are things like Peace Corps, City Year, um, you know, structured service programs, fellowships, if you're not aware of those, Pitzer um, contributes a lot of students and graduates to go out and do fellowships. These are structured, usually one to two year funded opportunities, often around study, research, service in some way. Good? Great. Okay, more caveat. So let me go back here. This 59% of the class who are working for full time, I'm about to show you the industries in which they were working, okay? Really quickly, we make a differentiation between industry and field, okay? So if someone is doing software engineering for a tech company, or if they're doing marketing or human resources for a tech company, that's tech. Cool, I love nods. Makes me feel so warm inside when you give nods, thank you. So here we go. Here you can see the breakdown of that 59% of the class. I think those are all pretty self-explanatory. Let me say too, um, I don't have time to do this today. You can see this same data for the classes of 2019, excuse me, 2019, 2020, and 2021 on our website if you wanna go back and see trends, okay? You have to remember we're a small school right? Um, particularly when you get to this level, when you look at past years, if the bar graphs switch a lot, it could literally be 10 people have done something different for us, okay? Okay. Great. I'm happy to answer questions about data later. Oh, here are some of those companies. And again, I'm going to go quick. Here are some of the graduate programs. Here is another fun thing, mission statements, right? I'm gonna let you read this. I'm just gonna point out one thing about it. I believe that a hallmark of a high quality liberal arts education, like your student will get here at Pitzer, is they get to define for themselves what success looks like, okay? That's why that's a part of our mission, to define and achieve postgraduate success. Now, I don't pretend that they do that as an individual in a vacuum. They will do that in relationship to their families and to the communities with which they identify. But it's important for us, what we want our graduates to do is to carry the Pitzer core values out into the world. The mode and the means by which they do that, they get to decide. And we want to help them in that process. Cool. Very quickly, what we hope to do with a student um, during their time here is help them to continue on the process they're on. Literally right now, your student in consultation with you is making a really important decision about where they're gonna um, put their time and talent and energy, right? We wanna help them discover more about themselves, learn about their values, their strengths, even their weaknesses, and how they hope to use those in the world. We also want to help them explore the kinds of career opportunities that are out there, right? I think almost all of us, based on our backgrounds, may have a pretty limited view 
about what are actually are some jobs that are out there that I could participate in, right? And we also know that new jobs are being created all the time, right? We want to help students explore what's out there. And then, of course, we want to help students achieve, but again, whatever goals they set for themselves. Let me say briefly, even though this looks like it, this is not a linear process, right? It's not like, hey, we'll talk for a few minutes, figure out who you are, right? <laughs> You'll explore a couple of things and then know exactly what you want to do. If we had time, we could go around this room, and I bet most of us are still in this process, right? So it's, a, it's a, at best a cyclical process, right? And so we want to honor that in a variety of ways. I don't have time to go through what we have in each category, but here are some of our special initiatives, okay? Um, let me briefly say as you look through these, on a weekly basis, there are usually three, um, at least three programmatic opportunities at Pitzer that we provide to students to engage in their career development. So for instance, every Tuesday evening, we bring in an alum or a parent or family member or an employer to have an informal conversation with students about what it's like to work in social work or investment banking or consulting or whatever it might be, right? Um, Workshop Wednesday is an opportunity every week to build a career-related skill. How do you, everybody tells you you should network, how do you do that? What is it? It feels so awkward and weird and artificial. How can we do that in a way that's authentic and then how does one take that on? Those are the kinds of conversations we have there, right? Um, our graduate and professional school series right now happens about bi-weekly. That's where we'll talk about how do you explore graduate or professional education, right? Um, how do you figure out the financing around it? All of those kinds of things. We have a wonderful, um, we're in the middle right now of our Pitzer Internship Fund. We have a limited amount of funding. So if a student is gonna do an unpaid or a very, very low paid internship or research opportunity, during the summer, they can apply to us for some funding support for that, okay? So again, I don't have time to go through all of these, but those are some highlights. Good? Okay. Uh, hopefully, you already have a sense or are gaining an awareness of the great academic and social benefits of the Claremont Colleges Consortium. Uh, here's, here's where some nods would help. Do y'all feel like you're getting that? Okay, I would argue that a very close third to those two are the career benefits of the Claremont Colleges Consortium. So let me be very tangible for just a second, okay? Any job or internship opportunity that comes into any of the Claremont Colleges is available to students from all of them. So if Microsoft or Meta, you know, when they're not laying off people, but let's just say that, that's actually been more their mid-career people, not their entry-level people. But anyway, if they put together an opportunity through Harvey Mudd, Pomona students can see it and apply, okay? If Accenture or the U.S. State Department or San Bernardino County Department of Public Health put an opportunity through Pitzer, CMC students can see it and apply. Tremendous benefit. We are all more attractive to the outside world together than any of us would be individually. Cool? Almost, there are a few exceptions, but almost any career-related event at the Claremont College is open. So if there's a career fair, an employer information session, a workshop, that happens at any of the campuses, your student can go take part and participate in that, okay? I would argue in the fall, kind of in the really busy season, if, definitely if you include virtual opportunities, there's probably a dozen opportunities a day. Honestly, the, the challenge is for students to make decisions about what to engage in and what to not. Good? Okay. I've gotta give Miriam plenty of time. I'm just gonna say also alumni connections from the consortium. Um, Pitzer, I hope, will be your student's home, right? Your student should start by reaching out to Pitzer folks. But Claremont College's alumni are also available to all Claremont College's students, right? And when you talk to alumni, they'll say all the time, yeah, we're alums of the Claremont Colleges. They may make some joke about the other schools and all that, like we all do, right? But they're, they're here for, for everything. Great. Um, oh. Sorry, so here's some ways that you can find out more about us. Our Instagram, I have very little to do with it, so it's pretty good, okay? Take a look at that website and all of those things. And we'll look forward to your questions, okay? Great. Here's my wonderful colleague, Miriam. Thanks, Dad.
Can you all hear me good? Well, no. Now the light is on. How about now? No, still no? Okay. All right. Here we go. Let me just take this out. Um, so I'm sure you all made an assumption as the director of athletics that I was going to get up and walk around like Brad. I am not. Um, second thing is we talked about sand and beaches, bar graphs. I got a picture for you. So here is our Center for Athletics, Recreation, and Wellness. Um, but before I kind of talk a little bit about that, I'm interested in, in knowing kind of where we're at as a group. So who, who here is involved with sp sports currently? Awesome. Who's involved with recreation? So whether that's yoga, Pilates, walking, running. Awesome. So one of the things that I want to underscore to make sure that you hear, if you don't hear anything that I say today, is the importance of moving your body. There is a plethora of um, academic literature out there that suggests the benefits of moving your body, mental health, academic performance. So if you don't do anything else, please continue to move your body. So I'll talk about how I can help with that. Um, so over at the Center for Athletics, Recreation, and Wellness, it's a brand new building on Pomona's campus. Um, but it's a really a space for us that has a lot of energy around it. So it certainly supports our athletics programs, but is also open for students, faculty, and staff to engage in wellness and moving their bodies. So I'll talk about this in three levels. So the first level is varsity athletics. So those are student athletes that are participating weekly in practice. They may travel or participate on weekends. They're generally um, competing regionally, but we may at times kind of travel across the nation to compete. As it relates to athletics, I will say we have a very strong athletic department. Last year we had three national championships. We had four teams with the highest GPA in the NCAA, and that's all of the, so Harvard, Yale, all of that. So not only are our student athletes getting it done in their athletic spaces, but also in the classroom, which is I'm super proud of. The second way is clubs. So if you're like, you know what? I kind of just want to go to practice a couple of times a week. I might want to compete regionally. That's an option, right? So it's a lot less time commitment, but you're still involved and still connected with uh, folks around campus to be able to engage in a sport that maybe you love. Um, an example is inner tube water polo. I have no clue how that sport exists, but it's quite interesting. I'm sorry, that's actually an intramural sport. Uh, but yes, but there are tons of like soccer, volleyball, all of those. Um, our rugby team actually just left for nationals. Last year they won nationals as well. Um, so they're super competitive. So if you're looking for something competitive but not quite five days a week and sometimes on weekends, uh, that's a great option. The third option is intramurals. So intramurals, there's not really practice. You might find some folks in your suite or folks on your floor to play a particular sport. And once a week you all get together and you compete against others. So it's a lot less um, uh, time requirement, but a good way to kind of connect, still stay active and, and be involved in sports. Another option that I'll give that's kind of connected to uh, intramurals is certainly physical education. So at Pomona College, they do have physical education classes. So if you're somebody who's like, I need motivation to actually work out, sign up for a class, because twice a week or three times a week, you'll have the option to engage in a physical activity class. So they are really just participation-based, so once you show up, show up for a certain amount of classes, you pass, um, it's certainly a great option for those who might want to stay involved. So that is a general overview of our um, department um, and certainly look forward to any questions that might arise during our Q&A. I, I really do enjoy coming to work every day because I have some amazing colleagues and we have a really great um, just division. And so I, we're gonna go ahead and open it up to any questions that you all have right now for any of us. Yeah, go ahead. The question is if laundry is free. I have to repeat it for the people, okay. <laughs> um, and no, what our students are able to do is put uh, money into their card to be able to do it, unless they live at CCA, which is um, the, the, our, our apartment area that's, that's over Claremont. Collegiate. Collegiate apartments, thank you. So that's where they're free, um, but not in the halls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's a great question. The, the question, as I understood it, is 
sort of what's our relationship or working relationship with the other uh, career centers. Uh, it's actually really good. So um, we meet at least monthly, the career center directors do, and then we actually have another group uh, called our employer relations committee that talks about, again, this sort of external outreach to companies and organizations. So we collaborate and communicate around a lot of things. So, uh, you know, there are some, there are some limitations. So when it comes to individual career advising, then we want a student to stay at their host campus. Most things to do with funding, we want a student to stay at their home campus. But really, other than that, pretty much everything is, there will be an exception. So for instance, when we host a trustee event, for instance, to engage with students, that will be Pitzer only. But those are the exception, not the rule. Does that make sense? The rule is if it's a career fair, an information session, again, even most of our like resume workshops will have script students who will come to those, right? The challenge, candidly, is to get students to cross these sort of almost invisible campus lines to engage. It can be a little intimidating for them, candidly. So we try to do a lot of things to help them go to see, you know, they feel like I've got to put on a suit and tie and go to CMC to go to something, right? So let's help them do that, right? Let's help them take advantage of those opportunities. Thanks for that question. That's a great, that's a great question. That's what I thought you were going to ask. So the question is, does career advising go on after graduation? And the short answer is absolutely. So um, trust me, we've been having a lot of those conversations lately with seniors who are coming in saying, I've only got like a month left. And we're like, no, you're going to be fine. We can continue to work with you after that. So really pretty much everything, the only thing, we can't give graduates money, again, because you're no longer a student. Um, but really, other than that, everything that's open to a senior is open to uh, alumni. Yeah, and we don't, some schools out there will charge for that. We don't do any of that, right? Or they'll limit it, like you only get two or three sessions or something. We don't, we don't do any of that. Yeah. Ta oh, gosh, clever and mirror attendance. I believe we have physical education classes. I don't believe we have a group yet that is a club tennis team. And we have a varsity team as well. Yeah, in the back. We do not have club golf. We have a varsity uh, sport, but not club golf. Yeah, so all of our athletic facilities are on Pomona's campus, um, and those are open to all Pittsburgh communities. So um, our facilities are not open to CMC, um, but you shouldn't have to go over to CMC because we have got pretty much everything that they have. So whether it's poles, um, Peloton bikes, uh, workout equipment. So yeah, you do have access to, to things here in the Gold Student Center as well as uh, the Center for Athletics, Recreation, and Wellness. Yeah, here we go. So the question is about our approach to any grievances um, that our student body brings up. And I'm going to go ahead and have Elena start because she actually is a, one of the advisors for our student senate. It's a great question. Um, so I think as a professional staff member in, in student affairs, our, all of us really desire to have conversation with students. We want to give students the space to kind of feel how they're feeling, to dialogue, to bounce ideas, and we want to be available. And I'd say, from my experience here, we only hire people that are committed to our core values, which includes dialogue. Um, so I would say, yes, we want to have conversations with students. We open our doors to have students, even up to the administration, they open their doors um, to have conversations with students. Um, 
And I think, uh, from my perspective as the Senate advisor, a, a lot of those conversations, you know, happens on a weekly basis in like the student governance perspective. It also happens one on one um, when students are just having, you know, concerns with, you know, roommates, um, with professors. Like we want to give them the resources and the direction, um, but we don't generally tell them what to do. Um, and so. Yeah, I would say I've engaged with CSWA and I've engaged with um, our student senators who have passions around that and I want it to be a learning experience for them just as much as I want them to maybe find an outcome, you know, that, that works, so. Anything else, student affairs? I think the support piece is probably the best, um, the best way that, that I have seen that we do here uh, compared to other institutions. It's, it's really about you know, we recognize that this is unique experiences for all our students. And so how do we help them feel like they're able to feel heard, like they're able to feel supported, like they can make a change? Because really these are students that are gonna go out into the world and make changes, right? Cause that good trouble. And so I, I see it as an opportunity for us to really um, engage in thinking about things critically also, right? Um, sometimes we're limited um, by our scope because we're not privy to more information. And sometimes that's good to be able to have those discussions. And so I, I would say that we do a really, um, we do a really great approach of let's see where our students are and then let's figure something out together. That's a great question. Yes. So the question was about how to get a single as a first year. So um, we do have some singles that are set aside. Those are usually for our accommodation students who have the documentation to be able to, um, to be able to request that. Um, so that's where how we hold off on our singles. And then after that, um, if there are any spaces available, and this goes um, even as sophomores, juniors, seniors, et cetera, um, it goes by a lottery process. And so um, how you get placed and what's available is dependent on where you kind of get assigned. No, no, we, um, because our first years all live in FOSS, so that's where all our first years is, but that's offline um, for our current selection that's happening right now for our rising sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So, um, so we do have room set aside for our first years that are coming in. And the housing process will happen in June. So you'll fill out your application in June once everyone is committed and solid. Okay, let's go here and then we'll go here. Yeah, so um, the question was about the housing configurations for past your first year. Um, we do have um, three areas where our, our non-first years can choose to live. The first one is West, and that is like the copy-paste, yeah, copy-paste um, type of setup to what POS is like. So it's, um, it's a suite, and there's two uh, students assigned to each of those uh, rooms, and they're joined by a bathroom. And then we have our CCA, which is our, our um, Claremont Collegiate Apartment. And, um, and what that is, is those are all singles, apartment styles that have kitchens and refrigerators and et cetera. And those are set up from um, studio spaces to um, two bed, two bath, two bed, one bath, or three bed, one bath, or three bed, two bath. So that allows for like students to, who want to kind of experience like that apartment feel. It's um, about a mile off campus, but we have a shuttle. So they kind of, it's more of that building of uh, autonomy. Um, and then the other, uh, uh, place that we have is Mead, and that's more of like the historical, like very special place for our students. They wanna live at least one year in Mead, um, and that's suite style, so that can be a suite of four, that could be a suite of eight, or a suite of seven. Um, so it just depends on what students are hoping to find after that. Um, our seniors do get priority in housing, so they get to choose like where they want to be. Um, and similar to the accommodations process for for our first years, we do that for our um, our rising sophomores, juniors, and seniors that they get an opportunity to submit accommodation requests, and then we place from there. 